Okay, so x plus 1 squared does not equal x squared plus 1. We all understand that, right? Okay. So when I actually multiply that out, and I'm multiplying x plus 1 times x plus 1, that's going to give me x squared plus, then 1 times x is x, 1 times x is x, so it would be 2x plus 1 plus y squared equals 1. Okay, so I've got it all multiplied out now. So now I'm going to substitute x is r cosine theta, so this becomes r cosine theta squared plus 2r cosine theta plus 1 plus r sine theta squared equals 1. Oh, no, equals 1 over there. Okay. Everybody with me so far? Right here. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't making it up. All I did in that first step was just multiply this out. And then I replace my x and y with the r cosine theta, r sine theta. Everybody with me so far? So this becomes r squared cosine squared theta plus 2r cosine theta. Now let's look at what's happening with these 1s. If I subtract 1 from both sides, don't they just zero out? Okay, so these are going to like cancel each other out. So that means that this becomes plus r squared sine squared theta. Now, super, super duper important. We started with an equation. You cannot lose your equal sign because I would bet pretty good money that if some of you were doing this on your own, you would just move on to the next step and you don't have an equation right now. So this, yes, this zeroed out, so that means this equals zero. You cannot lose that or you start to make up stuff and get confused, okay? So now what I want to do is I want to get my squareds on one side, my things that aren't squared on another side. So I'm going to get r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta equals, so when I move this over here, it's going to be negative 2r cosine theta. Everybody with me so far? So on the left-hand side, do I have a GCF? I do. It's r squared, right? So I factor out my r squared. That leaves me with cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, that equals negative 2r cosine theta. So what's cosine squared plus sine squared? 1. So now I just have r squared equals negative 2r cosine theta. I need r by itself. Well, I have an r right here. Divide by r, and I get r is equal to negative 2 cosine theta. And I am done. Good enough? We good? Because I divide, I didn't write the step, but I divided both sides by r. It wasn't a square root or anything. There's an r over here, so if I divide this one out, it divides this one out. Okay. Yeah, you have a question? What's your question? No, you are, you. Um, <laughs> this, uh, because this right here, is one from your reference sheet, cosine squared plus, good, yeah. See, you answer, ask a question, you get it answered. Anybody else? Do you have to remember this stuff? Is that what you're asking? Well, this one, I'll give you the sheet on the tests and quizzes anyway. Like, I feel like right now, you probably kind of know that one, so I don't have to say get out your sheet and make sure you know, you know what I mean? But, but yeah, I'll give you the sheet just so that you don't do weird things, okay? We good? All right, let's look it back at number four. I think number four might have been, I think I skipped number four. Uh, okay, I was thinking I skipped it because it was one of the completing the squares, but it's not. But yeah, okay, we'll go back here. So number four, we want to, now remember, x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta. So we're going to substitute this in, and this is going to give me r cosine theta for the x. That's equal to r sine theta squared over 5, right? Everybody okay with that? If you can get rid of a fraction, I say get rid of a fraction as long as you can do it legally. How can we do that here? Uh, multiply by 5. I'm going to multiply both sides by 5, so I get 5r cosine theta equals r squared sine squared theta. Everybody good so far? So I want to be able to solve for r, so I can divide both sides by r at this point, right? 
And um, so I, well, you can divide by one of two things. It doesn't really matter what you would do first. We would either divide by r first or divide by sine squared to get this by itself. What do you think makes more sense to you? r. Oh, what You feel like what? Cosine over sine. OK, so cosine over sine or it doesn't matter either way. I just don't know, like, when you look at it, like, what's the first thing is that you think? Because it may not be the first thing that I think. Um, and it may be the, either way is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by r, because I already did that. And, and. So I'm going to divide both sides by r. You get the same thing in the end. Those cancel out. So I get 5 cosine theta equals r sine squared theta, right? So now at this point, because maybe at this point now you know that this is where r is going to stay. So you want to move sine, not by subtraction, but by what? Division. So I would get 5 times cosine theta over sine squared theta equals r. All right, so this is not squared over squared, so it's not just a straight up uh, quotient one, but we can split it up by multiplication. It's different than splitting a fraction when they're adding. That's literally like separating that, but these are being, mul this stuff got multiplied together. So I could make this five times cosine theta over sine theta times one over sine theta. Do you agree that that's the same thing? Anytime you split something up, ask yourself, if I, if I put this back together like I just wrote it, would I get this back? So if I'm multiplying back together, I am right back here. That's how I know I didn't make anything up. OK? Everybody with me so far? So now, because I, I want to simplify it as much as possible, what is cosine over sine? Cotangent. Co on the top, cotangent. So this is going to be 5 cotangent theta. And what's 1 over sine? Cosecant. Cosecant theta. And that equals r, and we are done. OK. Questions? You don't like this. The answers are unsatisfying. Yeah, sometimes they are. So why else don't you like it? Like what's something holding you up or something make weird? Hey. This up, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, well, the, okay. So when you get here and you're like, I'm not sure what to do. When you're looking at your little sheet, you don't have anything that has the bottom squared and the top isn't, right? So at this point, I mean, you could like put all these reciprocals and stuff in there, but that might make things even weirder. So you just have to think about what if I did this and what if I did that? And it may not always be that the first thing that you think is going to work. As far as the other rules of what to do, like dividing it, that you just have to remember, those are the same algebra rules you've been using forever. Don't make it don't make it harder because I think sometimes y'all get hung up on some of those things like I'm not sure what to do. Well, if I took cosine out and put an x, you'd know exactly what to do. So try and think of it that way because sometimes I think you just psych yourself out. Yeah. All right. We good? You kind of get in your own head. So pretend like they're variables and see what would happen. Because most of the time, the mistakes that you're making are more uh, algebra or even multiplying or frac stupid fraction things, not the fact that you don't get the trig of it. That's that's what's holding up some of you. Okay. Are we good? Any questions at all? You got a question? Okay. Everybody got their questions answered? All right. So um, 